Fish on. Fish on. Got yep. Here we go, Captain Mac. Now this guy acts like he's got little shoulders on oh, him too. I see him on the graph Yes, there. sir. Now that's neat. When you can see a fish on the machine and go five, four, three, two, and then the drag goes off, that's, well, quite frankly, that's characteristics of a good guy is what I'm talking about. All right, I've got color. I see him out there. I got two fish on here, Mac. No way, two is there fish. doubles? How about that? Two fish on here. Oh, the same umbrella rig. You'll make us look good. If look you keep doing at that. that. Look at that. Seems I'm gonna come around behind you and grab him on this and side here. And there are two different we got two kinds species. of fish. How too. about that? All right, I'm gonna come around over here. How about that? Look at this. There you go, boss. Oops, sorry, coming to you. There you go, got him. All right, I'm so yeah, let me pick both of them up. How about Look that? Look at that. Got us a spotted that bass. That is wild. And a striper bass. How about that? That is wild. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm Captain Cephas McCray, and I'm here with one of the best striper fishermen I know, and that's Captain Mac <laughs> Farr. We're fishing on Lake Lanier. It is three days before Memorial Day, and we're in jackets. It is plum cold in Georgia. Who'd ever thunk? I would have never believed it. We that. are fishing with umbrella rigs today and some top water action as well. And look at this. This is proof positive that umbrella rigs work. How about that? Two fish, two species. On the same rig. Never heard of an umbrella rig before? Well, stick around. You're going to hear about everything you need to know fishing umbrella rig and top water action for stripers as well on this nuts and bolts adventure that is wild man Isn't that look cool? at that two at the same time Mac, it is the time of year. Well, actually, there is no bad time of year to pull an umbrella in freshwater or saltwater. No. In freshwater, the stripers will eat them year-round. It's just like any other technique, you've got to be in the right depth in the right place. So this is a year-round technique. I wouldn't be in the boat without them. So many days, Cephas is a guide. I've been out here, and maybe I had a good bite. Maybe I had a good live bait bite, or I had a topwater bite, and the wind started howling. And like today. I can still pull this in some pretty sloppy conditions where mm -hmm. bait fishing, there, the bait's working. That's not this. It's hard to present your bait mm -hmm. in really, really windy conditions. Mm -hmm. This is still fishable. All right, we're back. It is umbrella time, and look at that. That is a huge school of fish right there. We want to put these about 60 feet behind the boat. Now, the way to launch an umbrella is ease it right back, and look at my worm gear right here. Every time it goes across on this reel is 10 feet. That's 30. Here's 40, 50, 60. Lock it off right there. Put it in a rod holder and let the umbrella do the work for you. All right, I'm going to make sure my drag is good and tight here. I've got my clicker on, and now it's just a matter of sitting back and uh, having Mac put us on the fish. Watch the rods. Okay, Mac, the, the bottom is real close here, quite frankly. We're right up against the bank here. We're mm -hmm. in anywhere from 10, 12, 15, 20 feet of water, but we want to keep the umbrella rig at a specific depth. Yes. How do you know how deep that big contraption is? Well, when we started making rigs, see if it's one of the, that's one of the biggest questions we got from the consumer. If we got a rig, okay, and we see the fish and we know how deep we want it to be. Oh, see if it's real that oh, fish geez. In. So okay, all right, well, you'll find out a little bit more about the depth of rigs in a minute. Ow. i tell you what, Mac, while I'm reeling this fish in, go ahead and tell folks okay. how we know how deep this rig is running. Well, well see, if it's when we started making these things, that's what the consumer asked most often. Mac, how do we, we don't know how deep it is. How do we control our depth? So we actually made a depth chart, and on the back of our umbrellas, on the back of the header card, it's got a chart that'll show you how many feet, or if you have X number of feet of line out, the rig will be this deep. And depth control is important for not only catching fish, but keeping it off the bottom. And generally, whatever, wherever you're seeing the fish, you want the rig slightly above them. Fish are 20, come in at 15. Or fish are 15, come in at 12. If you use that formula, you should catch lots of fish. And speaking of catching fish, I think this one's about ready to come to the boat. I oh, go, geez. I'm, I he's go surfing. To work here. He's surfing. Gee whiz. All righty. Okay, I'm going to ease the line up to you. There I you go. Him. There we go. All right, that's uh, six passes in the same area, seven <laughs> fish. 
It's pretty. That's a pretty good uh, ratio. I love I, it. I love I like it. that. All right, come on, settle down, fella. See if you sold that for me, and I'll right, take care of that All right, rascal. okay, I got him. Get him back in the water here. I got the rig. I got the fish. And I'm also watching this other rod just in case. All right. All pretty right. little striper. Beautiful. Nice game fish. They really are. They re and, and even a fish like that on light tackle or even this, you know, bigger stuff that we're using, still a lot of fun. And you know, something else we got to talk about, Cephas, we're catching stripers in Lake Lanier. We only have stripers. But if you're in a lake that has hybrid bass, mm -hmm. the umbrella is just absolutely yeah, devastating. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And salt water? Salt uh, water, it, it, it's questionable whether the thing ought to be legal or not. <laughs> Spanish mackerel can't stand these rigs. Zephyrus, I think a Spanish mackerel will swim out of his way to get on one of these. So, if you go into the ocean, mm -hmm. don't take these out of your boat when you go to the salt. Yeah. Just carry them right down there with like, you. Uh, like they say, don't leave home without it. Don't now, leave home. Without here's it. one little thing, guys. Let me tell you about this. And Mac showed me this uh, not too long ago. If you're going to go saltwater fishing and you're going to be in an area where there's bluefish or <laughs> Spanish mackerel, I would suggest not loading up an umbrella completely full of jigs like this because first of all you're going to have if you got nine jigs on and you get into bluefish or spanish mackerel you're going to have nine you get nine bites nine bites on the same rig so here's here's a little trick try this guys get an umbrella rig put one jig in the center arm right the center of the right, arm right, right here and you can run it 12 inches 18 inches whatever your comfort factor then on the other connection points on the arms here Take a swivel mm -hmm. and put a willow leaf spinnerbait blade Absolutely. on there. Put, like a, or, like and, a number three, a small blade. Yeah, something that's shiny that makes a lot of flash, flash in the, the water. Now you'll have one fish on and you will catch them as fast as you can keep these in the water. And you won't get hooked by these other jigs because that fish is going to start frailing around. That's great advice. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> I've been there, done that. All right. Well, I'm about to bend there Good and done deal. that one more time. <laughs>